It is always a pleasure to have Robert Chapman, the international forecaster, with us, and now more so than ever, because he's the one who looks at the news, and he has CIA background. He has a background in uh, the markets over many, many years, and he knows how to look for the little nuances and innuendos that tell us exactly what's going on, unlike CNBC, unlike any of the things that you're going to see on TV, and unlike any of the other uh, people that you're going to listen to. That's why the international forecaster is so important today, more so than ever. You really should be subscribing to the international forecaster. It comes out twice a week, theinternationalforecaster.com, or for a free issue, 877-479-8178, 877-479-8178. I'll give all those numbers and information at the end of the broadcast, but it's so important to have this. I'm pleading with you for your own financial stability. Please subscribe to the International Forecaster. He makes sense out of what's going on, and he gives you news. He'll tell you what's going on. He's got one thing where he tell, told us in January what was happening. We're just hearing about it today. Mr. Chapman, welcome to Erskine Overnight, my friend. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for the kind words. And uh, I always look forward to doing the program. I guess we must have been doing it for about 10 years now. It's, it, it has been about 10 years, and my goodness, how things have changed. And things that you have been talking about six months ago are now coming in. It's like hearing tomorrow's news today. But the FDIC, you let, had the lead-off article on this Wednesday. It's the FDIC's Financial Follies Friday. Two Arizona banks, Community Bank of Arizona and Phoenix, Union Bank and Gilbert, three others elsewhere, uh, all have gone under 77 banks this year. We're not out of this crisis, are we? No, I, I don't think they're um, the financial houses, so to speak. Uh, I don't think they're any better off now than they were before. The banks have a lot of money, but uh, they've deposited over at the Fed Reserve after they borrowed it from them, and they're getting more interest on it than they're paying. And uh, I suppose they're running around buying Treasury paper as well. But uh, there hasn't been much monetization of that money. It's not being used. In fact, first quarter, uh, loans were down 1.8% versus the previous year. And in the second quarter, they were down 2.8%. So either one or two things have to happen here. And I don't see any green, green shoots coming up anywhere. In fact, I, I still see poison ivy. And uh, so I think what's going to happen here, and I projected this out this last January, and that is sometime late this year, early next year, they're going to ask for another stimulus package, and probably this time for $2 trillion. And uh, I don't know whether they'll get it or not, but if they don't get it, and that'll mean that the banks will have to start lending or the whole system will go down because they have not yet been able to solve the problem after, the, after commit, committing over a two-year period the American taxpayer to be responsible for paying a debt back on, you know, for $23.7 trillion. And that estimate comes from the Inspector General of the United States government who uh, handles that particular uh, region, uh, region, if you may. And so uh, those are official figures. And as we know, government lies about their figures, so it could be a lot worse than that. And so it just isn't working. No, but Wall Street is working for them because they're still getting bonuses. They're paying off bonuses to these guys. How in the world can they justify that? Well, they really can't, and um, uh, the big gains were made at Goldman Sachs, and uh, and they and 15 other firms have been front-running the orders in the market. Nothing's being done about it. The New York Stock Exchange was in on it, uh, and uh, they, they said that they did it to create liquidity, and that's not why it was done. <clears throat> it was done to enrich the players, and all the rest of the players who weren't in there with their programs doing that front running, uh, they get stuck. And they're losing oh, money. The public's losing money. Professional management is, of money is losing money, and it's dreadful. They have done this with the banks. 
to where the banksters are making more and more, especially Goldman Sachs. Now, you've got Colonial Bank in Alabama you talked about that failed, and that's the fifth largest failure ever. 346 branches in five states going to cost the FDIC $2.8 billion hit. That's a biggie, isn't it? It is, and you know, most people don't know this, and even professionals. The money that is collected from bank, they're the ones who pay the FDIC. And from time to time, the FDIC requests more funds because they don't have enough from government, the taxpayer. But that money that comes from the banks in the form of uh, insurance, if you may, and goes to the FDIC, they never get their hands on it. It goes straight into the general fund. So these numbers that you see uh, when they say uh, the FDIC has $11 billion left of the money that they had before, um, that's a bookkeeping entry. They don't have actually have the money. The government has. So if they have to pay $2.8 billion for, for some failure, uh, the call up, you know, the Treasury Department sent, sent out over $2.8 billion. They say, no problem. And they go out and sell <laughs> $2.8 billion more worth of bonds. It, it's a Ponzi the whole, scheme. The whole setup. And, and, and it's the same with Social Security, the same with Medicare. It's like uh, putting your money in, into a, the mouth of a tunnel, and th there's a vacuum cleaner in there going, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the whole exactly setup is what's so going funny, on. Mr. Chapman. And, uh, and so I expect FDIC to request from the government, uh, so they'll have money in their genes, so to speak, uh, $5 billion. Oh. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't ask for $500 billion. The, if they let, me, let me read one this, thing, if I may. If Let me read receive one thing, Mister. One five, seven billion dollars. They would only have enough money to cover one percent of the deposits of all the banks in the country. Oh goodness! Let me read one thing from the uh, from the international forecaster. This says so much, and this is from uh, mm. the. Uh, uh, sat last Saturday's edition, Regents Financial Corporation's latest quarterly report, and you'll see a remarkable disclosure. The company divulged that loans on its books as of June 30th were worth $22.8 billion less than what its balance sheet said. The Birmingham, Alabama-based bank, bank shareholder equity, by comparison, was $18.7 billion. So if it weren't for the inflated loan values, Regents' equity would be less than zero. Meanwhile, the government continues to classify Regents as well capitalized. Boy, Mr. Chapman, that says a lot, doesn't it, about, about the phony bookkeeping that we've got with these banks, doesn't it? Well, there's a thing called mark-to-market, and there's another thing called mark-to-model. And these firms, all of them, are supposed to be marking, should have been marking mark-to-market. And that's when you have uh, securities and, 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 and other assets. And uh, you say uh, on uh, December the 31st, it's the end of the year, we got to find out what all this stuff is worth. So they bought, they own a bond on General Electric, and they paid a thousand dollars for it, and they go out in the market, and it says it's worth eight hundred and seventy-five dollars. So they write eight hundred and seventy-five dollars on the ledger. That's what it's worth. But there are securities that don't trade very often, and the collateralized debt obligations, which were bonds which contained. Uh, mortgages and uh, <clears throat> these companies, especially the banks, the Wall Street insurance companies, are loaded with them. It's criminal. We'll be right back with doing. Robert Chapman, the international forecast. We're talking about the health care system that uh, Mr. Uh, Obama and uh, people are trying to put in and the health care system, uh, they have an excellent series on health care system around the world done by Lou Dobbs. The German system looks pretty good. The British system is totally bankrupt. The uh, Canadian system is not working in that sense. Uh, uh, the, in, it varies from province to province, but it isn't working. Uh, is, is there a system that would work in the United States where the majority of Americans could be under a health care system without being run totally by the bureaucrats? Uh, no. 
<laughs> you're gonna, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to accept what you've got. I think the only inroads you might be able to make uh, is in uh, stricter regulation of uh, for-profit hospitals, and um, uh, the the price of drugs have got to come down. I mean, you go to Mexico or Canada, uh, the same drug you get in the United States is half as much. Now, that's wrong. 